So guys, I'm here very near to Russia. I'm not going to show you, but I'm near to the Russian border. It's going to be in the show. And uh, there's a bunch of people here who want to take photos with, uh, with all of us. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. As usual, as usual. <laughs> So anyway, uh, we're just taking photos with all these um, blokes over here, or all these tourists, I guess. And they think that I'm Russian, and they think that Everybody who's white is Russian, so it's quite funny. They try. Some of them even speak a little bit of Russian. They say it like Nosvedania and stuff, which of course I can't speak Russian, but uh, it's interesting. Anyway, uh, I've just had probably the best breakfast ever in China this morning. Again, I can't talk about it because it's going to be in the documentary, but it's made me think about breakfast in China and how different it is to breakfast in the West. So I thought I would introduce you to what most people in China like to eat for breakfast and how breakfast works here. First, I'm going to introduce you to some of China's most popular breakfast foods. Here we have a very popular breakfast. It's called uh, you tiao, which basically means deep fried oil stick. As you can see, it's prepared in the morning. This is a very, very popular breakfast in China. And the strange thing is, doesn't matter where you are in China, you will find Youtiao. I mean, right now I am in Inner Mongolia, right on the border of Russia, and I can buy Youtiao. And down south in Shenzhen, I can buy Youtiao. And everywhere in between, I can buy Youtiao. Let me give, you, give it a little taste for you on camera. Okay, deep fried dough stick. Needless to say, these uh, yo tiao or oil sticks are not very much to the Western palate, at least not for breakfast, since they are fairly bland and, uh, yeah, very oily. Kind of like a funnel cake with no sugar. Here we have probably my favorite Chinese breakfast. It's called a baozi, which is a steamed bun. And usually inside, as you can see, it has meats or vegetables or something like this. This one looks pretty good. Let's give it a bite and I'll tell you in a minute. Mm -hmm. This is something I think foreigners will enjoy. It's the one Chinese breakfast item that really never lets you down. Bowser. So it's quite bizarre that, you know, breakfast doesn't really change around China. It's pretty much the same everywhere you go. Because, you know, China is a very diverse country, at least geographically, and, you know, the, the trees and the scenery changes as you move from province to province. But one thing you have to realize as well is that although China does have a whole bunch of ethnic minorities, and they do tend to eat slightly different kinds of foods, the Han majority, they pretty much like to eat the same stuff. There'll be different specialties in different areas, of course, but when it comes to breakfast anyway, Pretty much all the same. So what if you're staying in a Chinese hotel? What can you expect to get for a buffet breakfast? Now in a hotel breakfast buffet in China, you will be guaranteed to find a couple of things. Number one is congee or rice porridge. It's called zhou here in China and it comes in various different flavors. For instance, here we have a green bean congee and next to it we have a millet congee. They are very bland, I'm not going to lie, I've never liked them. Chinese people love them specifically because, well, people believe it's very healthy, it probably is very healthy to be honest. And especially when people get sick, they absolutely love to eat congee. It's like China's version of chicken soup. Um, but yeah, Western pellet, I don't think it really agrees with a Western pellet because not only myself, but every other Western friend that I have really can't stand this stuff. Um, Moving on from the congee, you will also notice that they have a variety of cold vegetable dishes, usually pickled vegetable dishes, things like, uh, you know, pickled potatoes and uh, beans and things like that. And it's called lian cai, which just means like cold vegetables. And it's something that you will find in the morning that people love to just kind of eat. 
There are also a bunch of other things which you might find a little strange at the breakfast buffet. Don't be surprised to find tofu dishes and fish and other things like that which you normally wouldn't expect to eat for breakfast. But one thing you can be guaranteed to always find are boiled eggs and manto, which is steamed bread. It's also very bland. So it's just straightforward, flavorless bread. It's very popular and you can be guaranteed to find manto for breakfast too. Let's move on from food and let's talk about drinks. What do people like to drink? At breakfast of course in the west we love to have a nice steaming hot cup of coffee or tea at least i like coffee in the mornings um, but here in china you're not going to find coffee at a breakfast buffet of course i'm talking about chinese hotels here before anyone jumps down my throat i do understand that you do get international five-star hotels that have continental breakfasts and things but you know i'm talking about staying in your very average chinese hotel and also if you just go out on the streets looking for Chinese breakfast in any kind of city or town, you won't find coffee, you won't find tea. What you're going to find is you're going to find doujiang. Now doujiang is basically soybean milk, soy milk. And to be honest, it's actually not that bad. But when you first try it, if you're not used to it, you're not going to like the taste. I certainly didn't. A lot of my friends that I've spoken to, they don't like it. They didn't like it, takes time to get used to, and it took me about a year before I could start to accept it as being something that didn't just taste awful. But yeah, once you're used to it, it's actually very nice. So yes, be prepared to only find soybean milk to drink at the breakfast table. Now what about breakfasts in the big cities? Okay, how about a first tier city? In fact, how about the capital of China? What is breakfast like in Beijing? Well, I've got a treat for you because, you know, this sort of film producer, uh, filmmaker, friend of mine who's actually the guy filming my documentary, one of the two, he's a fantastic videographer and, of course, a filmmaker. He made a fantastic little video that he's allowing me to use here to show all of you guys all about breakfast in Beijing. So let's go watch that and I'll be right back with you. Breakfast, breakfast, breakfast. Probably my favourite meal of the day. You just slept for however many hours and you're starving. But in China, cereal isn't really a thing. It's just not really that popular. So since arriving in Beijing, I've been forced to spread my wings in the breakfast world. And I'm going to show you my three favourite Beijing breakfasts. In at number one, we have Youtiao, or as I've got here, Youbiao. Which is um, just basically deep fried dough. Mm. Deep fried, chewy, great. But on its own, it's a little bit plain. So, this is where you add doujiang to the menu. It's basically uh, like soybean milk, pretty much. They make it fresh every single morning on the street. I initially thought it tasted a bit like dirt. Didn't like it whatsoever. Then, I added sugar to the equation, and that made it 10 times better. And then when you add yotiao to it as well, it just makes everything great. Dip it in. Fantastic. Coming in at number two, we have jianbing, which is basically a big, fat, savory pancake. And they have a hot plate, then they put on the batter, make a quick pancake, then they crack an egg on it, then they put some vegetables on it, then some spicy sauce, and then uh, a big, fat, crispy cracker, which really makes it good. Just a fantastic little snack. Very filling as well. It, it can be a full meal. Finally, moving on to number three, we have Baozi. This is probably my favorite of all Beijing breakfasts. Just little soft dough balls filled with a variety of things. You can have meat in them, you can have vegetables in them, you can have tofu in them. Last but not least, we have the pork Baozi. Have to beware though, I have ruined many a pair of trousers by letting the meat juices drop onto my crotch. So just watch out for that meat dripping out of the Bowser. Mm. So that's all of my Beijing breakfasts. Short but sweet, not very many of them, but they're the ones that I trust and go to all the time every morning when I'm hungry in Beijing. I can't actually think of anything decent to sign off with, so... <coughs> that works. Thanks Mark, stellar video. Go check out his stuff, uh, show him a little bit of love. He really does a good job and uh, 
you know, the quality of stuff he puts out. I really hope his channel can improve, you know, uh, in popularity. Anyway, guys, we're really at the end of our trip here. Literally, we've got a few more days left, and I can't, I just can't tell you enough how amazing it's going to be. It's been so, so amazing. It's been fraught with all sorts of nonsense. We got raided by SWAT teams. We got tracked down by the military and, uh, you know, had everything searched. And it's been, it's been in insane, the kind of stuff that's been going on in this trip. But everything has survived. All the footage is intact. And uh, it's just going to be incredible. So I can't wait for you guys to see it. Anyway, that's it for this one. Um, soon like i said soon i'll be back soon i can get back to my usual schedule soon i can start wearing a suit again and soon you know you can expect more regular updates until then though thanks for sticking through this absolutely um incredible yet tiring and amazing beautiful wonderful terrible annoying disgusting and uh all-round euphoric sort of experience this conquering northern china documentary that i'm making thank you for sticking around during this time can't wait to see you in the next one guys hope you enjoyed the video and you know the drill <laughs> stay awesome <laughs>